We'll continue with the car from last time and learn to define a road like this. The road will be customizable so you can change the number of lanes. We'll implement this feature using linear interpolation. Don't be scared, it's easy, I promise. I'll also teach you a cool trick to make the car look like it's being filmed from above like this. This will be really useful later when we want to follow the car through traffic. It's best if you code along with me, so open your project and if you want to have this exact version I'm using, get it from GitHub and let's get this show on the road. Get it? Road? Because we're... No, 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 no. Gonna code, debug and have fun. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu. Let's code now. In index.html, we are going to say here that we include road.js, a new file that we have to also create here, road.js, like this. And in here, we are going to start to write our road class. So very similar as before, we have a constructor here and I want the road to be centered around an X value and have a, a width. Now, these are going to be attributes that the road should remember. And actually, I want it to have also a number of lanes. So let's write here something like this and define here a lane count that has a default value of three, for now at least. It's useful to have a few more attributes here that we can pre-compute and use later in our calculations. So for example, we can have a value for left that is half the width mm, less than x, and a right that is half the width more than x, and I want the road to go infinitely upwards and downwards. So let me just define here a constant for infinity, a really large number. There's actually one in JavaScript already, but I found that when drawing things with infinite size, uh, weird things happen. So let's just have a very, very big value here like this. And our top is going to be minus infinity and bottom is going to be plus infinity. Remember that y on a computer grows downwards. Now, to draw the road, I'm going to make a draw method here, similar what we had the car drawing method. And I'm going to set here a line width of 5, so a relatively thick line. And I'm going to make it white. That's how the lines on the road usually are and let's begin a path and move to left and top and align to left and bottom so we are now drawing a vertical line on the left side of the screen i'm going to copy this below like this and I'm also going to draw a line on the right side of the screen like so and we are done with this road.js for now. I'm going to move in the main JS file and above where we define this car I'm now going to say a road is equal to a new road centered in half the width of the canvas. So that's going to be our center X. And it's going to have a width of the whole canvas width. I'm going to now go down here and write road draw on the canvas as well before the car so that the road comes first and then the car on top of it. Let's now save this, refresh, and almost nothing happens, but you should be able to see here on the sides 
some white lines there. Now they're exactly at the side of the road. I want to leave a little bit of margin there. So I'm going to make here this width smaller, let's say 90% of the canvas width. Save this and refresh and looks better already. But we said that our road should have some lanes right here in the constructor, the third argument. It has by default three lanes and we will need to make them appear as well. I'll show you. We go back down here and I'm going to write a simple for loop going from zero to this lane count inclusive. So notice here I have less or equals to this lane count. And now I want to know what is the x coordinate of each of these lines, of these vertical lines that we are going to draw. And depending on the lane count, we will have more or less of these lanes, but also the x values are different. We get these using linear interpolation. I'll show you. We say here x is equal to linear interpolation or lerp. We will write this function. Don't worry, it's not not complicated. And we will interpolate from left to right. So we need to get values between left and right according to a percentage. This percentage is going to be i divided by this lane count, like this. Think about it. This last value from here is going to be between 0 and 1. When i becomes this lane count, then this is going to be 1. And with all the in-between values, you just get percent values over here. So how this slurp function looks like is function lerp. It's a funny name, but I've seen it used by game developers, at least. And that's it. So you have the value of a and then the difference between b and a times this percentage t. So when t is zero, this part here is zero. You only have a. When t is one, this minus a from here will cancel out and you're just left with b. So zero and one or zero and 100% just give you the two endpoints. And for example, when t is in the middle, then this difference is just half of that difference. So it's gonna move half away from a and so on. It's a really simple function and I've used it in very many different projects. So I really recommend that you have it in your utilities as well. So let's see if it works first and then I'll move it in a utils file. It doesn't belong here. We'll be using this many times throughout this project. So here I'm going to align this part like so, but replace here left with x value like this and also this one. And we don't need this piece of code anymore closing this here and I think that we can save and test and look at that we have three lanes on our road I'll move this function now in a utils file so let me create it utils.js paste it here save the file go to index.html include it like this and now if i refresh everything still works let me go next to road.js and add dashes to the middle lines like so i'm going to check if i is greater than zero and less than this lane count like this and in that case i'm going to set line dash and i'm going to open an array 20 and 20 and this means that our dash will have 20 pixels and then a break of 20 pixels and another dash and so on. So let me close this. Otherwise, for the borders, we are going to put 
line dash equal to an empty array like that. I'm going to save this, refresh, and there are the dashes. Let's test also with the lane count of four, just to see if it works. It's quite nice, but you can see the car is off center now. I would like it to be on a lane, right? So it would be useful to have a method that tells us what is the center of a given lane. Let's do it. Get lane center with a given index. So this will start from left to right, starting at zero. I'm going to get a helper variable first, the line width equal to a width divided by the lane count like this. And then using that, I'm going to say this left plus half the line width. So I want to be starting these in the middle of the first lane. Plus, I'm going to multiply the lane index by the line width like this. And this is going to give us for different line indices an offset of line width away from the middle of the first lane. Oh, uh, not line width, lane width. Line width is something else, it's the thickness of the line. Okay, and to test this we can go in main.js and here instead of passing this 100 for the x of the car, we can write road get lane center and for example maybe we write here three to put it on the rightmost lane save this refresh and the car is on the right lane great let me go to the road and move this to have a lane count of three again i like that value more and now we see a problem the car is gone it's actually here on, <laughs> on lane index three, which is now outside the screen. So this is something you may want to have fixed. For example, by going here and using the minimum function and saying you want the minimum between the lane index and this lane count minus one. With this, the car is going to go on the rightmost possible lane, even if you accidentally tell it to go more than that. But I prefer my car to be in the center, so let's put this on lane one here, and we'll keep it here for quite some time. Now, this looks nice, and driving on this road definitely feels, feels nice. But uh, in the future, I want to detect these borders of the road here and also have collision detections with them because naturally we want the car to, to explode on, on impact. So basically, it would be nice if the road object could tell us where these borders are. And I'm going to do that next. I'm going to go here in the road, in the constructor, and I'm going to say this borders is equal to an array. I'm going to put these borders in an array. We now have just two, left and right, but think about it. Maybe we want to have highways and then you have another border in the middle or maybe some complicated situation requires more for some reason. So I'm just going to use an array and you can experiment with different things. And the first thing in this array is going to be a segment. So top left, bottom left points form a segment. And I'm going to make this also an array, something like this. And the reason for using arrays so much here is that our line segment here is straight, but maybe you want to experiment with something else like adding curves on the road. Actually, that would be a nice homework for you to do. So I'm going to keep arrays here like this. And uh, the borders for now are just two segments made of 
two points each. And these are going to be here, defined like so. And I just copy this three more times and say top right, bottom left, bottom right. And here we have right. I'm just going to copy this down here as well. And here we have bottom. And I'm going to copy this here as well. I will save this and nothing really changed, not yet at least, because these borders are just here. If we say road borders, for example, they are just in memory and they are easy to access whenever we need them. We just ask the road, hey, where are your borders? And it can give them to us like this. So the left border here with the x of 10 and the right border with the x of 190 and plus minus infinity for these. Great, but because these borders are here now, it makes sense here at the bottom to draw them separately. Because if we change them, like maybe if you're gonna make them curved, this drawing here won't reflect that. So I'm going to change this to be here starting at one and going to lane count minus one. And I'm going to keep just the line dash here like this. And then I'm going to move below this and say context set line dash to empty array. And now I'm going to show you a for each syntax. We are going to go through the borders for each border let's call it border, I'm going to use this arrow notation again, and I'm going to say context, begin the path, move to the first point in the border x and the y, and do a line to the second point in the border x and y. Stroke and that's it. Now, keep in mind that this doesn't change anything. So all the code that we are writing now is just to make everything more consistent. But I will teach you a cool trick next. We're going to make it look like there's a camera above the car and it's going to follow the car as it moves on the road. So I'm going to go here to main.js before drawing the road. And I'm going to say, save the context and translate nothing on x but minus the y value of the car and below drawing these things i'm going to say restore again like this and now if i save my car moved up there but if i accelerate you can see that the car actually stands still unless I go left and right, but the road is the thing that's moving. So what I want to do is actually not keep the car up there, but maybe move it somewhere down, like for example, canvas height times 50%. So this is now centering the car there as I'm driving. This feels really great. But uh, maybe a better value would be something like 0 0.7 because we, in this way, we see more of what is ahead of the car. And later when we add traffic, we want to be able to see those things and uh, figure out if the car will do the right things or not. Really funny how easy this last thing was. Were you able to follow along? Then great. Please like this video if you learned something today and share it with others so they can learn as well. And if you got stuck somewhere, comment below and I'll try to help. You can get today's code from GitHub and the full code is actually already on my website. Check it out if you can't wait till the end of the course. See you guys.